It is sunny and 50 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Royteen. From Tacoma to the top of the Space Needle, this is Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Big Lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru Studio. Welcome. We are also streaming on Facebook Live, and I am thrilled that you are with us for the big show. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm. I, th- this is just a, an incredibly troubling day, both in our state and in our nation, in so many ways. Uh, the underlying news is troubling. The news coverage of it is deeply disturbing to me. Let's get right into the big lead. The big lead. Top story. So a couple of weeks ago, the governor of Virginia described what they were planning to do with a bill there. And that was if uh, if there's a botched abortion and a baby is born alive, that they would then have the mother talk with the doctor about whether they should let that living infant laying on the table die. If a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, The infant would be delivered. uh, The infant would be kept comfortable. uh, The infant would be resuscitated if if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, So I think this was really blown out of proportion. Well, no, it wasn't. A discussion would be held between the doctor and the mother deciding if they were going to let that living child die. And it is the purest definition of infanticide. And the United States is joining North Korea in promoting infanticide. And make no mistake, there are several state legislatures, uh, New York, Virginia, you just heard the governor of Virginia describing it, Uh, Rhode Island would be one of the most dramatic, but this has nothing to do with abortion now. This is about babies born alive after a botched abortion. We're talking about a living human being outside of the mom. And so Patty Murray, senator from Washington, she prevented a unanimous decree that we're not going to allow infanticide in the United States. Patty Murray said, no, no, there are already laws protecting us from that. And there are not, because these state legislatures have moved to the most radical leftist agenda of infanticide. And so Ben Sass, the senator from Nebraska, he introduced the bill on the Senate floor last night, and he got a vote from everybody who was present. But first he explained, this has nothing to do with the health of the mother. This has nothing to do with abortion. This is a baby that has been born and is laying on the table after a botched abortion, but a living child. And here's how he described it before the Senate vote. America is a country built on a different principle. Ours is a country dedicated to the proposition that all men and women, all boys and girls, are created equal, even the littlest, even if they happen to come into the world in the most horrible of circumstances, even if they're crippled or inconvenient or apparently for a moment unwanted. Ours is a country that recognizes the fundamental, indistinguishable dignity of every human being, regardless of race or sex or creed or ability. As a country, we've struggled for two centuries sometimes at enormous cost, to extend these basic human rights to more and more of our fellow citizens. Today's vote is simply an opportunity to continue that work. So let me say, Madam President, by way of closing, despite oppositions and setbacks, despite some strange rhetoric about this bill over the course of the last week, I'm hopeful in the long term. Deep down, each of us knows that every member of our human family ought to be protected and deserves to be cherished and loved. And the love we see every day in the eyes of moms and dads for their newborn babies is an inescapable reminder of that most fundamental truth. Love is stronger than power. Thank you, Madam President. And so 
Are we going to kill babies in America? Well, it went to a Senate vote. Every Republican voted in favor of the Born Alive Protection Act. Every no vote came from Democrats. Three Democrats voted with the Republicans and said, of course we cannot let babies die. Again, nothing to do with abortion, nothing to do with the health of the mother, as Elizabeth Warren so blatantly lied in a tweet. It had to do with, are we going to let babies who are living outside of the womb, are we going to let them die in America? Every no vote came from a Democrat, including the two in our state, Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell. And so while state legislatures get more and more radical, you know, this goes way beyond late-term abortion, where they've already said, mom's in labor, you can kill the baby. But this is, no, 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 the baby is outside of the mom, born alive, you can kill the baby. I honestly did not ever foresee that this would be our country, that we were going to let babies die. And there is another aspect to this story that infuriates me, and that's the fact that other than this radio show, you likely have not heard this story if you are a consumer of Seattle-area media. Channel 4 had an AP story on their website. I saw nothing on King Cairo Q13's websites covering this. We're talking about Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell, the two senators from our state, and how they voted on this. And how our media has once again decided it's... Not even a story worth covering. Now, they did cover all of them. Bob, for, oh, Seattle Times didn't cover this either. They all covered, oh, Bob Ferguson is suing the Trump administration for trying to take money away from Planned Parenthood, from trying to take money away from an abortion mill, because they thought, Oh, Trump's trying to deny health care to women through Planned Parenthood. This will make Trump look bad. We will spotlight this story. I'm talking this is in the last 24 hours. But Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell voted last night that if a baby is born alive after a botched abortion, that the mother and doctor, if this is the will of the state legislatures, more and more have moved in this direction, and you just, I mean, it's not an exaggeration, you just heard the words of the Virginia governor, will keep the child comfortable, and then the mom and doctor will decide if we're going to let the baby die. So it's not a hypothetical. It's something that's actually happening. But again... Isn't this at the very least a news story? But it makes Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell look like baby killers. Because that's the way they voted. And so we have local media that won't even cover the story because it might make their preferred politicians look accurately, like really awful human beings. But a story about Donald Trump trying to block some tax money going to Planned Parenthood, oh, it'll strip health care rights. Let's run with that. Big time story, TV stations all covered that because it might make Trump look bad. When it comes to newsworthiness, nothing is more important than life and death. 
And yet we have a media that has ignored the most basic story of life and death. A baby is born alive and states are deciding to give the power to the mother and one doctor to kill that baby after it's born alive. Not even a news story. Not a blip. What would it take to get them to cover it? If uh, if the mom was straddling the border between the U.S. and Mexico when she was having the baby, then would they cover it? If the baby's born on the U.S. side, we'll let it die. I mean, is that what it takes? I've heard the left wailing, literally wailing, about separating families at the border. But not even one paragraph of coverage about Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell voting to let babies die if they survive a botched abortion. Maybe they really don't care about children at the border. Maybe it was just politics. I know that it's a sickness that I never dreamed I would see in this country. Both the underlying story that we are now letting babies die, born alive, we're letting babies die in America, and the media... Once again, showing in blatant, graphic detail how unbelievably biased it is. That on Monday, we had an abortion story that might make make Trump look bad. We'll run with it. Front page. Monday night, we have a story that might make Maria Cantwell and Patty Murray look like They voted for and with the baby killers. We'll bury it. It's not a story. Spike it. That's the role of the local media, apparently. And that's my role. To provide the only source of news of immense importance Because I'm not going to spike stories because I like a politician or don't like a politician. I'm not going to run with something because I don't like a politician. I will present you the news, certainly through the prism of my opinion, because that's essentially what this show is. But I will give you more news than the so-called journalists. Because they decide what is news based on which politicians need protection and which ones they want to attack. Next up in The Big Lead. The Big Lead. Bizarro world. Then you have the story that uh, Ursula had in her newscast that prolific offenders in Seattle, the numbers are absolutely shocking. One Hundred criminals have committed 3,500 crimes here in Seattle. And uh, Channel 7, Cairo 7 News, they talked to a street vagrant named Travis Burge who was bragging about his open drug use on the streets of Seattle. There's nothing in my life that makes me uh, functional, quite like meth. I use dirty needles. I shoot up AIDS. Dirty needles, AIDS. He's very proud of it. He'll shoot up in front of cops. In fact, he will seek out cops to shoot up in front of them. I go around and look for cops, and once I find cops, then I'll shoot up, and I'll be like, best friends. And and I've told you this for a couple of years now, that people are shooting up heroin, using other hard drugs right in front of police officers, and the cops are doing nothing about it. And why? Well, because the prosecutor has said, we're not going to prosecute people with personal possession amounts, so it's an absolute waste of the cops' time. 
And so that's what we have. People like this who's proud of his drug use, who's proud of shooting up in front of the cops. And on the flip side, you have people like this business owner. The business is called Gelatiriamo and Maria Coesen. She said every single day, these drug vagrants are trashing her business. Day in and day out, and these people are trashing my place, are disturbing my customers, are insulting my employees. Uh, they are hiding and shooting heroin in the, in the restroom. Um, it is just this, frankly, it's, I've had it up to my ear bone with that. And she says, yes, it is a small number who commit hundreds of crimes each. The same people over and over and over again. So, Jenny Durkin, where are you on this? You can't just arrest your way out of it, but you can make sure that the people who are the most prolific offenders get arrested and get charged and stay in jail. And those people that perhaps need more support services and haven't yet committed crimes, but are the, that may, we need to make sure that we get the support services. There's just absolute nonsense. You have more than enough money. You have, you spend $100,000 per homeless person per year. This is not about a lack of resources. It is about a lack of political will. John Scholes with the Downtown Seattle Association talked to Seattle's Morning News. I don't think anybody can look at this report, look at what's happening in our neighborhoods across the city, and say the system today is working. It is not. It's in utter failure. And so what are the numbers? We looked at 100 people who had spent at least four times in King County Jail in 2018. And what we found is those 100 people are responsible for nearly 3,600 crimes in our city. And here's one guy who's arrested 13 times in 2018 alone. And the rap sheet is long. In January, arrested for theft at a Fred Meyer. February, creating a disturbance, uh, refusing to pay. In March, unlawful possession of an unlawful weapon. The list goes on and on from harassment and assault of an elderly couple back at the same store uh, committing shoplifting. Jenny Durkin is proving to be, like her predecessors, an absolute failure. They all know what the answer is. We have to get away from the legalization of drugs. We're going to talk to Dan Satterberg tomorrow on the big show uh, because I don't think this is working. I don't know anybody who thinks that it's working to make this the drug magnet of the United States. But uh, we have just a shocking amount of people who are throwing their lives away in front of us, destroying the lives of hardworking business owners, and the beat goes on. That is your big lead. The big lead on Cairo Radio. And then they're back. Remember those death lots? Oh, the city of Seattle calls them safe lots. But when they tried it with RVs, it became a haven of crime and drug use. And now... They want to do it again, but they want to dump it all into one neighborhood. Talk to a reporter about that next as the Dory Monson Show gets rolling here. This hour of the Dory Monson Show is brought to you by Instagram.